Hi, I'm Antonio Luna, and I'm here to tell you why you should join Heritage High School Robotics. Ask any robotics member, new or old, and they'll tell you, you don't need any experience to join. We've gotten people from all sorts of backgrounds and any amount of knowledge, including none. Personally, I joined freshman year in January and as an art student. That's really knowing nothing. And today I'm president of the club and captain of a team called Patriotic Robotics. The students in the club will teach you everything you have to know, like the students before them did, only online this time around. So what can you actually learn by joining? At the start of each season, we get a new game, and with that comes a new challenge we design a robot around. We talk through the design process with some basic sketches and eventually move on to 3D modeling or computer-aided drafting, and then 3D printing. Afterwards, builders get to physically recreate the cat, and the programmers program the robot. All throughout the year, we also work on lots of other projects too. On the more business savvy side, we keep a detailed journal of the entire process, create presentation boards to catch people's eyes when explaining what all we do, and we promote our team and raise money for parts through outreach and fundraising events. Speaking of which, we also create banners, stickers, pins, laser engraved wood or cardboard projects, and a lot more using bigger and way more advanced tools. And finally, like you're seeing here, we make lots of videos throughout the year. And with all that being said, we would really love for you to be able to join us and become a part of our robotics family. And we could pass all this knowledge on to you while we have fun doing it. So join one of our many teams in our Google Meet every Friday from 12.45 to 3.30. Again, Google Meet on your student account and use code HHSROBOTICS to join. Hey again, I'm Janelle. I'm here to talk about another show, but this time I'm going to try something new. So here I have a box with different shows in it, and here I have a box with <clears throat> with different time time limits in it. So the name of the show that I pull out in here will be the show that I'm talking about, and the number that I pull out in from this box will be how long I have to talk about it. So let's get started. I can shuffle it. So today's show will be Sassy Go Go, and the time I have to talk about it is um, 30 seconds. So let me set my timer first. Um, I have 30 seconds to talk about Sassy Go Go, and my time starts now. So today's show is Sassy Go Go. Um, the story is about they take the the top ranking students at school and the bottom ranking students at school and they put them together to make a cheer team so it's kind of interesting how they interact with each other because they don't really like each other and the top students kind of act like better than everyone and the cheer the dance kids the lowest the bottom students don't really care that much so overall it's like and you begin to say anything um so that's my time limit. I ran out of time. Um, so yeah, that was Sassy Go Go. Hope you liked it. So that was today's show and I hope you enjoyed it. That's it for now and thanks for watching. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> Welcome to the year 2021. I'm your host Eden Ramos for Documentaries with Eden Ramos. Let's and let's get to the first documentary of, of this year. Here. Enjoy. This document is about uh, the Tokyo Olympics of 2020. The Summer Olympics is the biggest sporting event in the world, bringing more than 10,000 athletes from dozens of countries together every four years. 
it's extremely rare for the Summer or Winter Olympics to be postponed or canceled. Since 1896, when the modern Olympic Games began, it's only happened six times and it usually requires a war. Take a few seconds to list uh, to, th to view this list is of times the Olympics were postponed or canceled or pause if you need to. Due to COVID-19, the 2020 Olympics were rescheduled to July 23rd, 2021. It will be celebrated from July 23rd to August his 8th. Let's hope the pandemic ends by the time I'm that happens. What's going on, Patriots? Today we are doing a What's in the Box, and we have three contestants, and what we're going to do is, uh, they're obviously you don't know what's going to be in the box, and they have to guess what it is. Oh, this is too big. No. Just, yeah. Big. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, it's crawling out of the box. Okay, go. Ready. <laughs> uh, back more, back. Uh, uh. Oh, it's moving, it's moving. Pokey. Wait, I don't know this. Do I have to dig to get to the ocean? <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> uh, it might bite you, but you can start now. Yeah. So near the top, near the top of the box. Okay. <laughs> top, 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 top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, you're <laughs> 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 what is it? 
Is it in there? Reach in there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. There's something in there. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty on. No, you're no. close. <laughs> uh, reach it more, reach it more. <laughs> Content. What's up, y'all? I know y'all miss me. We are back for, we can say, season two of Shoe Mania. And like I said, I got a very, very special guest to open season two up. Man, when I tell you this, a lot of y'all know him as one of the coolest teachers for sure at Heritage. Everybody give it up for Mr. Kalantar. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? How's it going, Riley? Everybody give it up for Mr. Kalantar. See, a lot of people are probably like, Mr. Kalantar, Mr. K, what the heck? <laughs> See, a lot of things y'all don't understand about Mr. K is, is that when I first went to Heritage, Mr. K was actually one of the chillest teachers I've ever got to like speak to because he understood everything. And then it got to a different point where one time I noticed, I was like, okay, he's wearing Jordans. I'm like, usually I don't really see the typical high school teacher wearing Jordans and I'm seeing all these different shoes. I'm like, what the heck? He got a little drip on him. A little, a little, a little bit of drip on him, ain't that right? A little bit, I guess. <laughs> so, Call what you want. Exactly, I feel you. But see, that's that's the thing I like though. Like he, this generation when it comes to clothing, thing like that, you you can see like even if you don't really know Mr. K, you get to know him. Obviously, I'm a senior this year, so you know I'm gonna miss Mr. K for a lot. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna miss him a lot. But it's y'all see him next year, y'all gonna know. This is. Let's say the drip lord of the teachers at school. Just know that. Just know that. Just know that. I appreciate the compliments, man. I appreciate the compliments. <laughs> sure, for sure, for sure. So yeah, talking about talking about high school and shoes and different things like that. Going back, so as me, I've had a little, as you can see, a weird little senior year, but I'm pretty sure. In your freshman, your 10th grade, your 11th, your 12th grade year, back when you were in high school, when it comes to the fashion side, fashion type stuff, what exact, like, like my older brother, like I said, my older brother said that they had baggy, like it was real baggy back then. How, in your, in your preference, like what, what was the fashion statement you seen around your school? Um, around my school, it, it, it's the same. Uh, that you just mentioned as far as like a baggier clothing i mean it wasn't just um you know it's different than now with a little bit more form-fitting clothes it's more oh i don't even know how to describe it you have well i don't want to call them sweatsuits but they had like matching pants to go along with matching sweaters uh super super baggy uh that is why you know the late 90s early 2000s you just had those like Kind of bigger clunkier shoes too you know you don't have the smaller kind of things to go along with it um it's there's a lot of matching outfits a lot of oh man i think fubu had just came out fubu, what is that? The time. huge <laughs> fubu uh old navy fleeces were like the thing to get i think my sophomore year um those were like the popular just those sweaters just big baggy clothing is what it was yeah so um, it was interesting for sure. Uh, it's just a weird style if you look back on it, because a lot of people think like 90s grunge, but early 2000s 
you look back at any really um, almost like, you know, a Nelly video or those, um, who, else, who else? Like ludicrous videos. Those were what people were wearing like all around school. That was the style, just bigger jeans, you know, a nice starched crease, uh, making sure that, that you can barely even move in your jeans sort of thing. That was it. That was it. And that's, you can't really, like I said, different generations have different styles. Like I'm pretty sure, let's say I'm like unfamiliar with the, like the things you talk, but I've seen, I definitely seen like Nelly videos, little Chris videos. And I was like, like my, my dad and my mom, they used to play stuff like that when he and my brother were real, real young. Obviously, I don't remember it 100%, but, you know, I do I do remember some things. I, I remember seeing, like, like uh, I think it was Nelly. He had, like, a Band-Aid under his eye. I'm sitting here like, where's the cut? Like, come on, man. Always, man. I think... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. That's just the style, I guess, you could say from back then. I, I think he was wearing it in... Uh... For one of his uh one of his friends or something like that like in a kind of like a tribute um and there was growing up in missouri even though he was st louis i was from kansas city we felt like a little bit of a, a pride from nelly just because he was from missouri and we was making it even though nobody knew him it was just sort of like a, oh he's repping missouri we got that <laughs> and then uh you know when air force one when that song came out it just was like it just it just blew up it blew up, it just blew up. i feel you i feel you so going, like I said, so we we kind of, when I, I heard like a, a brand that I'm, I'm not really familiar with, but it was a big brand back then. I'm, I'm pretty sure you said FUBU, different things like that. So I heard, I know there's another other thing. The only brand I'm really familiar with back then, honestly, is probably like Sean John, I could say. Maybe if that if that was like pretty popular, I'm not really sure. Kind of I, thing. I feel like Sean John was maybe just like a little bit after. Uh -huh. um, I was in high school or people just weren't really into it as much they would rather wear fubu or like south pole was really huge mm -hmm. uh, just a random um, one um and then even on the other side of things uh jinko jeans were really popular so like on that side of the spectrum we still had just really baggy pants that everybody was wearing so there's just a lot of different um a lot of different styles and i i really enjoyed it because i liked dipping my toes in all the styles you oh, know yeah. like fixed to one i wanted to see what everything had to offer and just try it out that was always the fun part for sure so like i said i, I got a little a little understanding a little bit that i actually never knew about you i didn't know you were from kansas city did not know that that's 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 very very interesting because i know my brother he got to play some pro baseball out there in kansas city a couple years ago and and it was I, I never got to go to Kansas City or anything, but uh, he, he didn't come back to California for a minute, so he seemed probably to like it a little bit. So he probably liked the switch of it because he's grown up in California. So like, like I said, also, how was the transition from Kansas City to California? Um, to me, it was huge. So I knew that I think I had visited like, uh, well, I visited California once when I was in high school, like on a family trip. Um, but even before then, when I was like in middle school, I went to New York City. And I think then I knew, I was like, I need to get out of Kansas City. Um, and so by the time it was like uh, a year and a half, I was 19 years old, um, after high school, I decided, I was like, I'm gonna move to California. It's just a different pace of life. Um, I was dating this girl at the time, the high school sweetheart, we dated for like four years. I was like, I wanna move downtown Kansas City. Nothing was there at the time. I was like, let's get a loft, $400. She's like, no, it's too far from everything which was like 20 minutes, which is nothing out here. Oh, um, you know what, no, can't move out there. I'm just gonna move to California. So I moved to California <laughs> um, and I haven't looked back. I don't think I could ever go back. And I know that there's like students that can't wait to like get out of this area. Um, and I'm, I always tell them, I was like, you guys, the grass is always greener for somebody. Don't say that too much because some people, this is their getting out. Like I got out of Kansas city and this is where I ended up and I won't go back there. I like the, the style of life here the closeness to like San Diego, LA, or even like going up the coast to San Francisco or to Vegas, something like that. There's always something to do. Where there, I just felt landlocked. Life life just moves at a slower pace. Um, so, you know, there's been a lot of great things. The city has grown a lot ever since I left. Not that I left that it's grown, but just things have happened. Like downtown was revitalized. They have a huge new like Sprint Center 
So they're thinking about getting like a basketball team and stuff over there. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just different for everybody. All my family is still back there and they will never leave. I've tried to convince them to come out to California. Um, and they're like, no, it's just too expensive. But, you know, out there it's just getting as expensive. So Definitely. For sure. I like that. I actually do. I like that. I'm going to have to, like I said, when I'm down with college and all this different stuff, I'm definitely going to be a person to travel to everywhere. So I'm going to be traveling everywhere and I'm going to be taking a note for Kansas City. You feel what I'm saying? But so now we're going to go back. So um, I know the ring coming a little bit to the end. I know that the audience hears all this different things of me talking about Mr. Kalantar this with the shoes, Mr. Kalantar this. I want to ask you a couple questions. Not couple, but one question. Do you have any pickups that you've gotten over the quarantine, maybe? Uh, yeah. Um, hmm. It's you know, there's been some big items that I missed out on. I, I won't lie. I I try to get those Ben and Jerry's. I try to get okay. those beans. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's beans. Those, those that's beans is fire. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cap. Uh, they're just, it's, it's just my style. Um, just, uh, I like things that are a little bit different. That's always yeah. been my thing. Like, obviously, they're the mainstream as far as um, being like a Jordan 4 or a Dunk. But just the style of them is a little bit different. And that's just how I've always kind of been. So, um... I've picked up a couple of pairs over 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 the quarantine. Yeah, um, let's see. This was the first one that I picked up. Uh, this is an Adidas Campus. Um, it's a it's a collab between a Japanese retailer and a Ricotor um, over there that just kind of puts shoes back together. So that's why you have these different um, pieces of material just kind of making up the shoe. Uh, so this is probably one my first pair that I picked up. Those are clean. I like the I like the colorway. I'm not even gonna lie. That that just like you if you have it with a good that's why that's the thing about shoes is you don't even have to have the best fit in the world. If you have like a good shoe that can stick out your fit would that would definitely cover up your fit. Yeah. Um I, I thought it was pretty sweet, like the suede just coming down over the sole there. Uh, not on that side, that sort of thing. Uh that was the first pair that I picked up. Well, that wasn't the first pair. I didn't bring that shoe over here. You you had shown some uh some crocs in your last video. Adidas released some Crocs, and I picked those up. I picked them up. <laughs> I didn't even know that. That's lucky fire. I ain't gonna catch. I'll have to. I'll have to send you a picture so you can sure. look it up. Definitely. Uh, these are a pair that I've always wanted, and then when uh, when they came out in the all white colorway, I was like, you know what? Now's the time. I just feel like it's a, it, it'll be a clean shoe to wear. But these uh oh the answers yeah the answers what boom. I always wanted to get a pair of those. Are those comfortable? No. Have you tried them on or anything? What's up? Have you have you tried them on already and everything like that? Oh yeah, like these um, are like kind of the up tempos that you might have seen me wear before. Um, mm -hmm. They're just like a bigger a bigger shoe, and so uh, you know they're just uh, they they feel good. They feel good on the feet. I like them um, just as far as comfortable goes. You know, I have a wider foot, so a lot of shoes like that. In your last video, you were talking about like the Vapor Maxes and stuff. I just don't fit. I just don't mm -hmm. fit. So um, I'd like to that one. Let's see. Now I'll take it to this. This one kind of um, has a 90s feel to it. And, uh, and you know, uh, we have these Jordan 5 Bel Air alternates. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. No, that's crazy. The other ones have like a different little bit of color on the bottom. Oh, wow. Um, but on the inside, it just has like a little bit of design, like aesthetic as far as that 90s, that 90s colorway, which I think really stood out to me. And so that's why I was like, okay, got to pick those up. Anybody in the crowd think they got a better teacher? Stop speaking. I, you know. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, I'm humbled. Right. Now. <laughs> uh, these next two, these next two are holiday themed. Uh, so I don't know if... Um, I don't know if you guys like them, but like I said, it's my style. Uh, these are uh, some Air Max 97s. These came out for Halloween. At night, oh, those are fire. Oh my, is that, is that like, that's like white ooze coming from it? That's so it's, sick. It's, uh, it's like a neon green, almost like the color of that that's on the bottom. It's like the glow in the dark green. That, I would, that's, go, that's crazy. I was just about to ask that, did that glow in the dark? Those are fire. I ain't gonna lie. Cool. I've been wanting to get some. 
Um, somebody had a, a pair a couple years ago. They were all black with like a green drip on it. I think it was a. Oh, I don't even remember whose it was now. But I was like, oh, I like those. I never picked them up. And then I saw these and had like a little bit of a drip on there. I was like, well, gonna pick them up. So uh, the 97s were, you know, I was in middle school. Um, that was kind of when I I really started getting into shoes. Um, you know, the, the Jordan 12s came out when I was in sixth grade and it just like blew my mind, blew my mind. They were, I don't know if it was just like modern, simple, whatever it was. Um, and then after that, it was a matter of, you know, sitting in the back of the bus, like with the East Bay magazine with all my friends, like looking at the shoes, looking at everything I couldn't afford is what it came down to, is what it was. Uh, I think the first pair, the first pair of shoes that I ever got to buy um, that were like somebody's shoe, but you know, my family, they didn't have like, we didn't have much. My parents did what they could. Uh, yeah. so I never was able to get like Jordans. Um, that's why I have Jordans now. I have the uh, like Scotty Pippins up tempos that I'll wear. And so I, I rounded it out when I was in seventh grade. Uh, you can post up a picture. I got some Dennis Rodmans. They were like these Converse All Stars. And they were like, you know, they were a little bit cheaper than everything else. But I felt like I was on top of the world because I had these like Dennis Rodman shoes. And, you know, that's just the Bulls. The Bulls were like big at that time, right when I was in middle school. So, um, brings me to my, my last pickup, my most recent pickup for uh, quarantine. I see it. I don't know what people are gonna. I don't know what people are gonna think. I have a couple pair of Air Force Ones. Uh, you know, just like we're talking about, like Nelly, uh, just brought them out, brought them out. Um, you know, some lows, some highs. Just a holiday themed one that just came out. Boom, the Christmas sweater. Like uh, you have. Those are definitely. Those are definitely. Those are. You know what those remind me of? Those remind me of. Oh my goodness! What's the shoes that Adidas made? I'm talking about colorway style. They're fire. Like like a bunch of rappers wear them all the time. And it has like, some of them have fur on them. You know what I'm talking about. I, oh at the God. moment I'm blanking, but I, I bet you if I see it, I would know. What are they called? Oh my goodness. I can't remember, it's a, it's a, it's a name of a person. But it's like, it's a, those, those, those are what those shoes remind me of because they're so like, you definitely see those and you're like, dang. Like, cause it looks, it literally, that looks like a Christmas, just that's it spells Christmas all over it. That's yeah. Right. It's a, it's like a Christmas sweater material on the toe and on the tongue, on the inside, it's like fur. Um, and then you just have this like nice, this that's fire. beautiful leather, man. Uh, um, so far, these are my quarantine pickups. Uh, that's, that's trying fine. to get those big boys, you know? I feel you. All right, y'all. Like I said, this, this, this one is different. This one is definitely different because everybody's so used to me interviewing people who are, oh, this is this, but this is Mr. Kalantar. This is a teacher. So you can't say anything now. You can't, you, you can't say anything now because there are definitely, even, even if it's a teacher or anybody like that, there are definitely people out there that beyond, beyond what age, what, what thing they do, anything. There are sneakerheads. There's probably an 80 year old sneakerhead out there collecting more shoes than you are. So don't mm -hmm. just, you can't just like I'm saying, you can't just you can't just do anything or judge a book by its cover because obviously Mr. Car Mr. K got the drip. So like I said, y'all, this was this was sneaker game, and this is like a sneaker game to me. So this is shoe mania, y'all, and Mr. Kalantar. Thank you for being on here. I it's appreciate been honored, it, man. Con, of course, and we're out. Young Dizzle.